This is the Oris Aquis date upcycle. <music> Over the past couple of years, Oris has been linking quite a few of their products to the sustainability agenda. From the hanggang to the whale shark, Oris has been trying to create an image of a company that's being sustainable. Coming from the sustainability world, I always look at these kind of initiatives with a critical eye. More of my thoughts on Oris at the end of the video, but for now let's talk about the watch. Previously in the Upcycle initiative, uh, Oris launched the Clean Ocean watch where the plastic is actually used as a case bag. In this particular version, it is brought front and centre to the dial. The question is, is it a hit or a miss? Before going into the sustainability agenda, let's get to the watch and what I think about it. Today I'm reviewing the larger of the two pieces available. This particular piece is 41.5mm wide, 30mm thick and has a compact lug to lug of only 47mm. In the vein of the Aquis line, it has an integrated bracelet which does limit our choice somehow but the bracelet that comes with it does feel pretty good, more of that in a moment. It has a solid 300 meter of water resistance and sapphire crystals both fronts and for the exhibition case back, which is always a nice touch. The case has a combination of brushed and polished surfaces which also gives it a little bit of a character. Let's get to the dial which is the centerpiece here. It is made from recycled ocean plastic and Ori sources it from Tide which is a company that produces recycled materials made from plastics that have been collected from the ocean. Tide is currently being audited for certification to give an assurance to us buyers that their sourcing is actually sustainable from various aspects. Recycling plastic is a tricky procedure and it is close to impossible to get a uniform colour. Due to this, every dial will be unique and I think that is a nice little extra. Of course, there is always a risk of somehow getting a bad colour combination but I have the feeling the Oris probably does some QC checks to ensure that they don't come up with something that is totally unacceptable. It is definitely a risk that Oris is taking here, as consumers can be very picky about aesthetics. And I have to note that I have seen some color, com uh, color combinations that made legibility a bit of a problem. This particular copy, however, at least in my eyes, is very good. The color combination somehow reminds me of Nebulas. There are even gold flakes near the logo, which is pretty cool. It also has a 3D effect, as the plastics are layered upon each other upon closer inspection. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about this particular colour combination. The date window is cut very neatly and the printing is really crisp, the best I've seen in any watch so far. Overall, I think the dial is definitely a stunner and is something that Oris is going for. From the naked eye, the indices and hands seem to be finished very well, but under macro, you can see some imperfections. I am not the fussiest of persons, and as I've mentioned before in some of my other videos, you can't really see them even if you really try under everyday use. The bezel insert is brushed grey ceramic as you can see here, and I think it is the perfect choice in this case as to draw attention to the dial. The bezel action was a little tight in the beginning, but after a couple of days of use and quite a bit of fidgeting, it now turns quite um, smoothly and is very grippy thanks to the rather aggressive coinage as you can see here. It also aligns perfectly, though I have to say that there is a little bit of back play. The movement powering this piece is the Oreo 733 which is basically a modified Celita SW200-1. It is a solid dependable movement with 38 hours of power reserve. When it was released, I was actually wondering if they would put in the in-house caliber 400 movement in it, but I honestly am glad that they did not, as it would have pushed up the price significantly. The exhibition case pack allows us to view the iconic red Oris Rotor. I really like the smooth winding action of the crown here. There is the Oris logo also etched into the crown, but I have to say that it is a little bit sharp. However, I noticed that engaging the second position to adjust the time sometimes require me to turn it a little bit before it catches and engages. Um, also, 
Hatching the traits to screw the crown back in is very slightly difficult but once you actually catch it, it actually screws back in very smoothly. So it could be a QC thing but I definitely expect a little bit more um, at this price range. The loom is Super Luminova which is plenty enough here. The blue loom somehow gives off an ethereal feeling when combined with the multicolored dial in the dark, which is something that I really dig. The bracelet has polished outer links and brushed center links that tapers down nicely to the clasp. I think it, this gives it a little bit more of a bingy feel and I personally uh, thought that more brushed surfaces would give it a nicer toolish look, but again that's personal preference, some would prefer it this way. Scoot links on the bracelet makes adjusting a breeze. There is also a diverse extension. If I can show you here. For those of us, for those few of us who actually go diving with it. The, the uh, milk class feels very solid in hand. And overall, I think it's actually a very, very nice bracelet. One of the best I've had in my hand so far. I think it would be great to actually dive with this watch while doing an ocean cleanup. Here is the watch on my 5.75 inch wrist. It probably wears a little bit too big for me as usual, but I don't mind. But I am honestly surprised at how comfortable the watch wears. As with most watches with bracelets, I usually take a little bit of time to get used to it. But this felt right at home from day one itself. I think it's probably a combination of a flat case back, as well as uh, the links that fall straight down and wraps around the wrist very comfortably. Huge props to Oris for that. However, I do wish also that they made it in a 39.5mm case size which would fit me better. But I guess you can't cater to every wrist size out there. I think this is what we want. Um, and what I think Oris is trying to do there a little bit, which is to get a beach that's really clean, free of plastics, and well, something that we can always enjoy. This is my first experience with the Aquis line. I think I do get the reason why they are so liked by the watch community. It wears good, looks good, and overall just feels like a very solid, dependable watch. For 100 US dollars extra, this upcycle version I think is a good addition to the Aquis line. On to the sustainability side of things. I've seen some comments online that some people have mentioned that the little bit of plastic that Oris is putting in their watches here barely makes a dent into the whole plastic pollution issue. There's a lot of truth in that, but I think what is more important is the awareness that Oris is trying to bring to this whole issue that we are facing right now. Oris has claimed that they are climate neutral, which is a good step towards sustainability, but I really do hope that one day they can achieve carbon neutrality without offsetting. And also, um, they are saying that they will publish their sustainability report next year, which is for 2022. I was actually a little bit surprised um, that they were a little bit late to the game as I believe that a lot of large corporations should be already be doing that. But at least they are moving in that direction as quite a bit of the watch manufacturers, the large ones around the world are actually not publishing their sustainability reports. There are still some ways to go, especially um, in terms of how always source their other materials such as um, the steel and all that. But we can all scrutinize that once the report is out next year. Um, just a little bit of side note from my side as well. Did you know that about 11 million tons of plastic enter to, enters the ocean every year and this is expected to triple by 2040. And this is quite alarming because there is a lot of negative consequences both to the environment and ultimately to us. So I hope as we as individuals can do our little part and maybe you know um, stop using single-use plastics as much as we can such as straws etc the most important thing of course is the reduction of using plastics in our daily lives that goes a long way the other of course is to when we have to use the plastics please dispose of them responsibly and hopefully put them in a place where it can enter into the recycling industry so that's all for today my little thoughts on this watch as well as the plastic issue that we are facing um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. You'll motivate me to produce a lot more. See you guys in the next video.